Welcome once again to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway prairie tank. This is episode 79, removing old paint from a miniature steam locomotive. So why am I showing these express type safety valves? Well they arrived in the post this morning and I'm just stalling because the main job is a real pain. This is the front valence, the part that covers the oil pump. Yesterday I put it in this tub of gun wash which is cellulose thinners and today all of the paint has fallen off. Look at this. Once the paint had dropped off and I pulled the part out of the liquid, this copper bit wasn't particularly well fitted to the brass part and because there was a gap and it's right in front of the smoke box it was full of ash. I can stall no longer, it's on with the main job. This is a bit of a deja vu because I've done this already. I removed the bulk of the paint using Nitromore's paint remover. And here I'm depositing some from the tin in my usual plastic tub, or should I say, usual polythene tub. These sweet containers are really good things to have in the workshop. I get them from my friend Chris English. Before you even open the tin of Nitromore's, you must wear things like this. As it says on the packaging, safety goggles. And this is what they look like from the other side. It's a good idea to unpack the safety goggles before wearing them. But you get the general idea. Safety goggles in the workshop are really useful. And here we go. Nitromore's application. You have to put this stuff on fairly thick and it dries up quickly. Some people wrap the part in a polythene bag to stop this from happening. But I'm not going to do that. I think it will be okay. As I mentioned earlier, I've removed the bulk of the paint with the first application. When using nitromores, it's also a good idea to wear a pair of gloves, a pair of plastic gloves, because if you get it on your hands, it burns. In this situation, I prefer to live dangerously. My solution is not to touch the nitromores. After a while, the paint was bubbling nicely, so I left it for a while longer, then I took it outside, and here I am, blasting off the old paint with the nitromores residue using a hosepipe. Just down the road from where I live is a company who do powder coating and shot blasting and sand blasting etc. You may be thinking, why didn't I take this to the sand blaster? Well, it's made from brass and worse than that, it's soft soldered together. And even with the lightest of blasting, I think some of the solder would just get blasted away. As you can see, after the second application of nitromores, some of the paint isn't even moving. In case you're wondering what the red pieces of wood are, they're to stabilise the unit, because when it doesn't have the frame underneath it, it's really loose and wobbly. Very much like a girlfriend I used to know. After a while, with the help of my wire brush and an electric toothbrush, most of the paint was finally removed. And the paint that's left is going to take quite a bit of removing. The paintwork on this engine has been subjected to quite a lot of heat over a long period, so some of the paint is firmly baked onto the metal. The only thing I can do now is to use the wire brush method, and this is a horrible job. Really, really horrible. I mentioned in a previous video about not spinning these wire brushes too fast. In the following clips I'll be using three types of wire brushes. This one is the cup-shaped wire brush. And this type of wire brush is by far the worst for shedding bristles. Needless to say, you must wear eye protection when using tools like this. When I am wearing eye protection, I can feel the bristles pinging off my forehead. Something you must not do that I'm guilty of doing is wear a fleecy type jacket. As the bristles fly off, they stick in the fleecy jacket really well. And for the rest of the day, the bristles start to stick through into the inside of the jacket and stick in my arms. This is really, really annoying. It's not really painful, it's just an annoying sort of stab with a bristle. I'm wearing the fleecy jacket now as I'm doing the voiceover and I'm still picking out bristles from two days ago. In the end, when I was doing the job, I took the jacket off. It was fairly cold in the workshop, but a bit of minor hypothermia is definitely the lesser of the two evils. The third type of wire brush I use on jobs like this is this one. And when they're new, they're really good at getting into tight corners. But after a while, the bristles twist together and they're not quite so effective. Here are my recommendations when you're doing jobs like this. One, wear eye protection. Two, wear a breathing mask. 
And three, obtain a bin liner, punch holes in it for your arms and your head, and wear that like a jacket. The bristles hopefully will then bounce off the plastic bin liner. This video is very heavily edited. It took, I would think, about one and a half hours to do the rubbing down with the wire brush job. While I was doing the job, I did notice that the side panels that are fitted by the doors needed a small amount of extra support at the top. And in this clip, as shown previously, I'm drilling holes, followed by countersinking them, to take some 6B countersunk bolts. You will notice that the countersunk hole is deeper than it needs to be. This is because I'm going to fill it with JB Weld, as indeed I will be doing with every one of the countersunk holes. The holes in the sides that are not countersunk are for the handrail stanchions. Here I'm cleaning up the front panel. And I need to do something about this copper part. Apart from rubbing it down with some emery cloth, I carefully use the soft hammer to flatten it slightly. And it's level now with the brass part. I'm going to fill the gap with some JB Weld. In this clip I'm using some coarse emery cloth to rub down the area at each side of the door. All I need now is some JB Weld 2-pack epoxy resin, and here it is. It's the usual 2-pack stuff. One is the resin and the other is the hardener, but it needs to be mixed very thoroughly. For both mixing and applying the JB Weld, I used a piece of mahogany planking, half an inch wide. And for this application, it's much better than the usual, much larger spreader. And here I'm filling the countersinks where the screws hold the plates together. And I'm applying the JB Weld quite thoroughly to the countersunk area to make sure it goes right into the bottom and also fills the slot in the top of the screw. It will be 24 hours before I can rub down this JB Weld, but it doesn't stop me from continuing work removing the paint from this assembly. A while back, a kind viewer sent me some really good things. They are paper sanding discs. Yes, here they are, paper polishing discs. Although they do remove quite a lot of material, I think they're designed for teeth. Maybe false teeth, or maybe real teeth, I really don't know. The whole system is very well designed. The square brass part that supports the paper just snaps onto this arbor. Here's a box of the paper discs. I think these are the quite coarse ones. I'll use these first. Because I really don't want to polish the metal, I want to roughen it up. And provided I'm not too heavy handed, I think this will be fine. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the paper sanding disc at all. I didn't apply much nitromores to the inner part of the tanks. And I think I'll just use some of these paper sanding discs to remove the paint from that area. The paper disc has made short work of cleaning up the spectacle plate on both sides. What I need to do now though is rub it down with some very coarse emery cloth to scratch it. I'm going to be doing quite a lot of rubbing down with emery cloth on this job. I was going to make this engine look like it had a bell pair type firebox. But to be honest at this moment in time I don't think I'll bother. I've just made a very quick card template. Here is the roof. And the good news is, I can remove the paint on the roof by using a tub with cellulose thinners and just do half of it at a time. The stuff I'm currently using is called gun wash. It's for cleaning spray guns, but it seems to be very much the same as cellulose thinners anyway. And that's it for this episode. I'm going to now go back into the house and remove all the bristles from my fleecy jacket. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.